I will say his name just this once, and only whisper it. The name of this evil one is... Rahotep. So says the priest of Thoth, beseeching your aid. Something has awoken within the ancient necropolis in the Harhahura Hills. Have you the courage to venture there and rid the land at last of a terrifying evil? Necropolis, the legendary adventure from Necromancer Games. Now completely updated and revised for 5e. Now on Kickstarter. Welcome to Master the Game. I am Juice, and today I have the privilege of speaking to Alyssa Faden uh, and Mark Greenberg. Uh, so I want to thank them, first of all, for giving me their time tonight uh, to talk about a really cool Kickstarter that I think you guys are going to really enjoy uh, hearing about. Uh, it is a throwback to the past, and, um, you know, can't say enough good things about it. So with that, uh, let's start with Alyssa. Uh, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got into, you know, doing what you do? Sure. So I'm Alyssa Faden. I am an absolute advocate for the uh, tabletop RPG uh, industry uh, and hobby. And I somewhat accidentally became a professional cartographer. Um, my primary clients are uh, Frog God Games and Troll Lord Games. I do a lot of work for both. Um, some of which is right behind me here. And I was drafted in to work on this particular project with them. Awesome. Uh, and how long have you been working with Frog God Games? Oh, I want to say six, seven years, something like that. That's pretty good, right? Quests of Doom 4, I think, was the first project I did with them. Although, full disclaimer, um, their CEO, Zach Glazar, I did some work with him before he actually joined Frog God. So you might even say I've been working with them for 10 years. Wow, that's nice. Uh, and then how about yourself, Mark? Sure. Well, you know, I, uh, I, I was a longtime gamer. I've been gaming... <laughs> probably longer than I should admit at this point. Um, I will simply say that my first Gen Con was Gen Con 15. <clears throat> so everyone else can do the math. Um, and I was a consumer in this industry for a really long time. Uh, about three years ago, after uh, a career of being a corporate lawyer, I decided I'd sort of had enough and uh, decided to um, uh, give up the, the law license and uh, wasn't sure what I wanted to do next. And I'd known Bill Webb, who's the CEO of, of uh, Frog God, uh, for a while. And I think I think I posted on Facebook that I had just you know, announced that I was retiring. And he said, hey, you want to write for me? And oh, I guess um, I haven't written anything other than, you know, the stuff that I'd been DMing my entire life. But, you know, that had just been shared with my friends. It hadn't been shared with with anybody else. And um, the first project Bill gives me is the World of the Lost Lands, which is the compendium of the entire campaign world of Necromancer and Frog God games, working with, you know, it was six or seven other authors and artists and a cartographer and trying to both write and edit and project manage that monster. And we got it done. And so at that point, Bill was like, well, you know, what do you want to do next? And I was like, I don't know. He said, well, how about Necropolis? <clears throat> so uh, Necropolis it is. Um, but that's, that's, you know, I, so I've, I've come at this, you know, in a bit of a different way. I've not, I'm not a longtime professional. I was a longtime consumer and now I have the chance to be on the creative side. And it is, it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. So my brother-in-law, uh, he plays in one of my stream games, actually. He's a lawyer. Uh, most of his clients are big banks in uh, the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. So uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, he, uh, it, It's funny. I've been playing with him for seven or eight years now. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, just interesting. He's, and I've played I, with a lot of lo other lawyers as well. I think I think a lot of lawyers, you know, by definition, we're pretty good writers. Yeah. But what we have to do is not particularly 
creative. I mean, in some ways it is, right? I yeah. mean, in some ways you are, whether it's a contract or, or pleading, you're, you're about to be creative and be a compelling writer or you can't succeed at it. And so I think there are a lot of lawyers who are frustrated, game designers, especially because, you know, if, you, if you're good with the law, you're probably pretty good trying to figure out the rules. And right. <laughs> maybe the exceptions. Yes. I've, ne I've, I've never literal. had another... I've never had another lawyer in one of my groups. That, actually, I think I have had one now that I think about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> better yeah, better to have like the lawyer as the DM. <laughs> right. I think I've had two or three, to be honest. I've had a lot of engineers, too. But, yeah. Anyways. Uh, so, with this project, uh, when did this project start? Like, when did the idea come about? And, when, you know, when did it come about? Uh, I, I, I've been working on it. I mean, it's been... I would think over a year at this point, um, as the um, World of Lost Land sort of started kicking off um, and, and that network wrapped up, it was sort of looking for something to do after that. And um, this was something that I think Bill had wanted to do for a long time. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a classic. It's, it's one of you know, Gary's last published works. Uh, it was one that he was particularly proud of. But it's only been available in, in the Dangerous Journeys and 3.0. It had never yeah. been made available in, you know, either a, um, you know a uh, you know a, an OSR type product or or 5e. So that you know it, I, that was sort of when I got involved uh, in that, and I've sort of known about this sort of for probably more than a year at this point. But the last the, the, you know the last year to nine months has really been been when, when most of the work has been done. How about you, Alyssa? I, I kind of uh, became aware of it a similar sort of time frame to you, I think, because I remember I was just finishing up on the Teagle uh, map, and um, I was like, I am never doing another map that size again. Um, and Bill said, well, don't say that yet, because we're going to do Necropolis. And I was like, <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, there's probably a similar sort of uh, time frame. And just so everyone is really clear, um, I... Uh, the, the Fogs actually have a full-time cartographer that they use called Robert Albauer, and he's really, really good. He's a very talented individual. And he's the one that did all of them, uh, their Rapun Athok maps, and there's hundreds of those. I can't do that. I can't churn out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of the maps. I'm the one that you pull in if you want 300 hours of labor on one map. Um, I'm the one that they pull in when they're going to print something like 12 feet by 12 feet, which is what Teagle was. And this one um, is 60 inches by 80 odd inches. It's an absolute monstrous map that I've done here. And so when they decided they were going to do Necropolis, Robert's brought in to do um, most of the maps. But then that final, final, final dungeon, it's like, OK, Alyssa, come on, let, 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 let's see what you can draw on this one. And so that, that's when I got involved. Oh, that's awesome. So with that, because this is basically a, uh, a remake or, or uh, however you want to say it, uh, how many liberties were you able to take to add to it or change things in it? You're, you're going on the assumption that I was actually given instructions. <laughs> that, that's not a safe assumption. All right, um, so, you know, some things had already been started you know, I think uh, Alyssa had already started working on the map um, of of sort of the final tomb. Robert had already done some of the maps, um, and some of the artwork had actually had already been 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 commissioned. Uh, the mission wasn't to sit, sort of like have Bill Webb say to me, "Hey, Mark, you know, here's the word Necropolis. Come up with an adventure." You know, right. that wasn't the mission. The mission was to take uh, the, the the Necromancer Games version, and which uh, was I believe 2002. If I recall correctly, I think the 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 Dangerous Journeys version was 92, and uh, the 3.0 was 2002. And it was it was updated, revise it, change it. So the way I sort of took my mission was I, I tried to leave the maps mostly the same. Um, we, I did make some changes, and we can talk about how Alyssa made some changes too. I think, but um, you know, I changed a lot. There's probably not a single sentence in the entire thing that has not been changed, modified in some way. 
Um, there were certain encounters that I decided needed to be changed. You know, you, I, Gary loved certain things. Um, he loved teleportation, as everybody knows if you've read any of his stuff. Um, he, he had designed this. Part of his mission in the tomb here was to sort of one-up uh, the Tomb of Horrors, frankly. That was really what he, he sort of avowed uh, this to be. And, you know, the Tomb of Horrors is interesting, but the Tomb of Horrors is, is really intended as a, um, as a convention-type game. Yes. Um, it's not the, the adventure you want to bring your beloved characters into that you've been playing with for many years. And you know, what this adventure involves is there's a village and there's overland encounters and there's other places to go that are all laid out and there's a whole necropolis of tombs before you might even get to the last tomb and so by definition you've been playing with these characters a lot and i i felt that there were some changes that just probably needed to be made um to make uh the adventure play more like a modern adventure i tried to focus on motive, character motivations and provide background to the, to the DM that really wasn't in the original that I thought would help um, the DM, even if the players never figure it out, help the DM run the game. And as Alyssa will say, there were some rooms in, 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 in the tomb that were just, there just wasn't anything there. And I decided I'm going to put something interesting there. And uh, sometimes that was on my own initiative. And occasionally Alyssa put something interesting in, in, in her map and I decided to run with it, which was also kind of fun, the collaboration. So it, it is the same general plot. Right. The characters are basically the same, uh, but there are a lot of other changes to encounters and the like. Um, and of course, partly it also had to be updated for, for, for 5e and then converted into swords and wizardry, which, which itself involved just some necessary changes. Uh, yeah, that was the other part I was going to say. But uh, before I get into that, um, what, what with the maps did you take some liberties to do? Like, do you have a favorite part that you made some adjustments to or something that stands out, Alyssa? Yeah, a couple of things. And, uh, you know, Mark's right. I think when you take on a project like this, and this is certainly not my first time I've taken on something that has is being reimagined, you know, for the 21st century. Um, but you have to stay canon, right? You 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 can't look at the like a map I've done here and go, well, this looks nothing like the original, because I think it would actually offend people. So I have to stay true to the original, for sure. Um, and I live streamed my uh, entire process on this. And what I would do is I would actually, uh, at first I would have the original and I'd be reading it out and I would draw it. I would read the room description. I skip anything spoilery and I go say, okay, let's draw this. And there were a couple of locations where I, you know, I'd read it and I'd go, oh, that's kind of boring. <laughs> and I would draw it. You know, yeah. um, and then I would get Mark's draft and I, he's like, I pepped it up a little bit. It's no longer just a completely empty room. You know, right. if you've done all of this room uh, work and you like come out and it's empty, 30 feet by 30 feet empty. I don't know. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, Mark did something with that. So he made it more exciting. And there was, I mean, I'm not going to do any spoilers here, but there were, uh, and first and foremost, I'm well known for adding little Easter eggs to my maps. So there are plenty of those in this. Um, I was inspired by um, the egg, E-G-G, -G, uh, in the, uh, God, what is it, Mark? Help me out. Uh, Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. Thank you. I always get it mixed up. Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. And so I love putting Easter eggs into my maps now quite a bit. I want players and GMs alike to look at a room and go, wait a minute, is that a teddy bear? with a bloody knife next to it. I kind of want to get that type of thing. And the GM go, uh, I guess it is. Um, but there was there was one there was one area, honestly, uh, that where it was it was just meant to be a sidetrack for the players and just waste their time. I, I think the original manuscript even said that. Just this is just a time waste. And well, it was a time waste on the on the on the map too. So I kind of redrew it so it was a little bit more visually interesting. And again, no spoilers. Part way through, plot down a big huge statue of something that was never in the original book. 
And um, fortunately, Mark took a look at that and went, okay, I'm going to write that in. And I would never expect it, that's to be honest. So, so no. is it safe to say that's no longer a big giant time suck right there? It's an interesting big giant time suck. I don't know. It depends, it, 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 it depends upon how you want to look at it. Um, you know, uh, it, it was definitely an interesting. I mean, the, 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 you know, Alyssa literally put this thing in there, and then I, I, I think I, I messaged you and I said, "Did you have anything in mind? I mean, when you did this, I mean, is there anything you want me to write about this?" And she said, "Nah, I just thought it looked interesting." And so actually there were two places where I just said, okay, I'm going to sit down and think about it. And I came up with something. And in the end, it, I, I think it's, it's, they're interesting encounters. Uh, they could hurt the party if you play things wrong. I'm not sure it'll help the party much, but um, <laughs> it was fun. And that was actually, a, it was a fun bit of, bit of collaboration. But I mean, look, fundamentally, this is, this is a tomb. Yep. I think that's a big surprise. I, I you know, I, I think it says in the background of Alyssa's screen there, the Tomb of Rahotep. So it's probably not a surprise to anybody, um, <laughs> you know. And it's obviously it's intended to be quasi-Egyptian, although this is actually set in the World of the Lost Lands, the book that I did originally, uh, in the land of Kemet, which is a version of, of, of Egypt. So if you're, if you're expecting traps and deadly dangers and things like that, you'll probably be right. And, you know, the goal is to avoid as many as possible, except the one for the ones that you need to actually discover so you can figure out where to go next. Sounds like a great beginner's module for people who have never played before. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> to be honest, this is one, and I, I play tested it with a number of different groups. Yeah, and I would say the following about it: number one, and I think uh, I think Alyssa would agree with this, but feel free to disagree with me. Number one, I think this you know, the, the the characters need to be reasonably high level. I think I basically said you should start, you know, between seventh and ninth level, um, in in fifth edition, and that depends in part upon the party size. But it should also be players who are kind of experienced. And similarly, I would also say this is one where the DM is going to have to be fairly experienced. This is not a beginner's adventure for somebody who wants to run this either. And this is also one you, where you're really going to have to spend the time to read through a good chunk of it before you even start playing because there's a lot of things. It, 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 it's, it, Gary wrote a complicated adventure I modified a number of things, but it is still complicated. It is still going to be a challenge to um, even even really good players uh, with with pretty potent characters. When, so when you I think said this fun. was the the throwback to trying to one up uh, Tomb of Horrors, uh, that said all I needed to know. I mean, I've I've read through Tomb of Horrors, and that's a nightmare. <laughs> well, the the, the the biggest difference. And, and and this is and again like this is goes back to the issue of um, it being a campaign and not a one off, not not a, a tournament module. Um, it's okay in a tournament module. Example I, I give is you know you walk into a room, the stone block blocks the entrance, and there's a lever in the wall, mm. and if you push it up, a door opens, and if you push it down, the ceiling falls and everybody dies, no save, and that's sort of your your classic. Gary, old, really old school, and there's no way to figure it out. Maybe you can try contact other plane or something, but there's no way to figure it out within within the the adventure. I, I don't like those, yeah. and so where there were places like that in Necropolis, you know, even where I kept the basic, even if I kept the lever, mm -hmm. to, to to stay with the analogy there's a way to figure out which way is the right way if, if you're playing carefully, which I think is, is, is yeah. important. Now there is, I think one or two places where I left it, where it is kind of impossible to figure out, but they were places where at worst it might really hurt one character. Not everybody. But it's not, it's not going to yeah. wipe out the party. Uh, but I, I did feel that there, that, that, that I had to keep a little bit of that in there. It is still an extremely challenging. And I think, you know, people say you can't create, Tomb of Horrors for 5e. You can't create an adventure that's going to kill 5e characters. 
either you can create an adventure that will kill five E characters. And I think I, I think this I think this one clearly can do it. Yeah. And with one of my play tests, the party got into a room and you know, a couple of things went wrong and we actually had to finish uh, before the, the combat was over. Uh, but it was probably going to be a TPK. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had no problem killing uh, characters in 5e. <laughs> so I, I understand that. And definitely with dungeons, it's a little bit easier to do that as well. So, right. You know. Um, so, with that, uh, what we were saying a minute ago about how you had to take into account you're making this for 5e, but you're also making it for swords and wizardry. Um, how hard was that part of it? Because obviously they're two very different systems. Uh, like the balance is different between types of monsters and encounters. Uh, how hard was that to figure that out between the two? Well, part of the answer is the good news is that um, we have a separate individual who gets to do the conversion to swords and wizardry. <laughs> but I did have to keep that sort of in mind as I was building the adventure. And I mean, I'll say from the 5e perspective, one of the things I learned very quickly is that the challenge rating system in 5e just was was not going to be helpful. It was just useless for, for purposes of building an encounter. I really had to work at it and figure out what would be the most parallel. And I discovered that even in the 3.0 version, there were some places where the balance was just way off, mm -hmm. where, you know, the party would have faced incredibly challenging encounters and combats and then they'd come to a place where you know they were facing you know and at this point figure the party is probably going to be between 10th 10th and 11th level in 5e and they're attacked by like five mummies That's not and bad. gary's no. and gary's adventure says when the party flees from the mummies down this corridor x y and z <laughs> and i'm like an 11th level party of six to eight characters is not fleeing from five mummies. Right. It's just not going to happen. So I had to totally rewrite that encounter to make it actually make sense. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, partly that was 5e, partly it was just, I think there just were mismatches in the original. Uh, I, I think, I, think I, I did a pretty decent job, but one of the things I found that was interesting, and as I said, I've been playing for a long time, and, you know, uh, AD&D was my game. That's what I, you know, I, st I started with the Holmes box set, but quickly graduated to AD&D, um, which is obviously, you know, you know that, that's, that's sort of that, that era of, of where Swords and Wizardry is based. Mm -hmm. I was surprised at how many parallels there were. Yeah, you, 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 the monsters are going to have to be scaled appropriately, and I think there will be some challenge to that. And saving throws will have to be scaled appropriately a bit. But fundamentally... You know, and, and this may be heresy to say this, but you know, first level characters, whether it's in Swords and Wizardry or AD and D or 5e, face skeletons. You know, second level characters, maybe you face some zombies, and yeah. maybe maybe an ogre. You know, um, you know, it's it's there's a lot of parallels. I you know, in my view, and as long as you've got the combat scaled properly, I don't think it's going to actually be that that challenging uh, because I was thinking about that as, as we were going along. Um, and, and I realize that may be a little heresy to say that. And of course the person who's got to do the conversion may tell me that I'm out of my mind, but I was thinking about that as I was going. And I think, um, you know, yeah, you got to think about it, but yeah. I think it'll convert pretty, pretty well. That's good. That's good. Uh, so where are you guys at in the process? Let's start with you, Alyssa. Have you done all the maps for the book already? Yep, all of the maps are done. Um, they're complete, um, final print-ready versions handed off, QA'd by Mark himself, actually. Um, so yeah, we're, we're done, I, I want to say, from an artistic perspective. The art on the Kickstarter definitely looks great. I, I was looking through that, and I love it. And I, I do want to quickly mention, so we have someone in chat who has played and run games on my channel. Uh, he has backed at the Leatherbound level. And he has promised to run it for me. So we'll probably stream it on this channel uh, whenever that comes nice, out. Nice, so. nice. And well, I, will say, I will say this, um, if, 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 because Mark is shooting for um, a really nice layout of the content on this that is going to be very similar to Teagle Manor. And Teagle Manor is perhaps one of the most beautiful books that I've ever picked up. The Fox did an exceptional job of it. 
And I know that's where Mark's head is at on this one too. So you're not just flicking to the back of the book every time to get the map. Uh, the, the map is going to be there, just parts of it next to the descriptions as you go. And it's going to be an incredible book. It, that, that was a good backing level. Yeah, I should I, I I should warn you that that you're gonna have to think about what you're gonna stream because this thing is in no, it, 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 yeah, the, the, uh, I think if if you played the whole thing through, and you play once a week, you've got months worth of material here. Oh yeah, if you play the whole thing, it, it is it, it, there is a lot here. The other thing I should mention is is and I don't know how you guys are gonna do it for streaming, but they do have um, we've got uh, the virtual tabletop option. So for people who are going to play this, you know, um, over over a VTT platform, th there are some great options to be able to, to do this. And, and so they're going to take Alyssa's map and it's going to work and, and you'll be able to have your characters actually moving through her map. Um, so th 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 this should be great. And the leather bound version. I mean, if you've got, owned any of the Frog God books, these things are they're indestructible. He does. Um, he has like the uh, what is it? The ra uh, the the massive one. Uh, what is that called? Uh, well, there's Rapinathic. There's the yes. blight. Yep, he has that. I don't know if it's the leather bound version of that, but he's yeah, he's definitely got a lot of the old school games. Yeah. Well, school we, games. whether it's leather bound or the regular, it's library stitch. These things are just built. Nice. I mean, you know, pages are not coming out of these things. They're just <laughs> That's not. Awesome. That's good. That's so. good. That's one of the yeah. biggest gripes I have, because I'll have books up here, thicker ones, that sometimes the pages will fall out because they sit on your bookshelf and because they're not done at the higher quality of yeah. stitching or they're just glued in there, unfortunately. And, and, and of course, you know, let's be honest, one of the, one of the truly old school aspects are books that fall apart. So True. We, we're, we're, we're not old school in that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to get binders and put them in there. Like, I have no problem with that. But, you know, some people are really put off by that. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys play it. Hopefully you'll enjoy yeah. it. I think I will. Uh, Bill from Roll Stats is awesome. He, uh, he's, he's always run some good games. He's run uh, Keep on the Borderlands for us. We used uh, Rule Cyclopedia for that. and um, He plays in a few of my games, and he's absolutely awesome to play with. So, um, Yeah, and we'll let you guys know, too, when we run that, just so you guys are okay. aware. Uh, and maybe I'll get him on Roll20, and we'll play it with with that so we can use some of the dynamic lighting and stuff. Um, so with that, we had one question also I lost. I think it was, what was your, or what is your guys' favorite Marvel character? Completely off topic, but uh, do you guys have a favorite Marvel character? Well, you're thinking about that, Mark. I, I do. <laughs> wow. I know, right? Total, I, totally. I, it's going to make it different tonight, you know? <laughs> that, that, that is repetition. definitely mixing things up a little bit. Um, I, I'm going to be a little corny with my response. I, I'm I'm a fan of Captain America. I love like, it. Hands down. And it, it, I think it's because, I mean, look, that there's a lot of great, great, great characters. And I think the casting that they've done with the films yes. has been exceptional. And I think the writing has been on point. The continuity has been on point. The overall arc of story has been almost seamless. Like they knew right at the beginning what they were going to do at the end. Yes. Um, and I think there have been some incredibly moving and also um, light moments. Uh, some of, uh, you know, the best cinema I've ever watched has been definitely watching those films. And so many characters come to the forefront. But there was something about Cap that just encapsulates honestly i think my spirit in myself like if if i was going to be a superhero i would love to be cap and, and i think that's why he is up there for me does that translate to your rpg characters like are you a paladin normally actually you know what funny enough kind of sort of yeah now not <laughs> all of them because um i uh, my favorite character is actually the ones that almost go up opposite from that you know i've got yeah. a rogue who um he was one of my favorite characters and i've got a shadow run character who's just an outright assassin you know yeah. uh, so that's certainly not cap going on there <laughs> right but in my core most of my characters have been the the cleric or the crusader or the paladin type and i i feel very at home with that type of character i love it that's awesome interesting well, you know, I, have a, I, I I'm still having a hard time. I mean, I mean, you know, I, I will say to to match what what Alyssa said. I mean, Captain America has, you know, in a sense, because 
he is the, the, the individual who will always do the right thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, he has the moral center that I think, you know, I wish I always had. And, you know, there, there is, there is part of that that is just, you know, he'll do the right thing even when there's really bad consequences. Uh, so I, I really like that, but I can't say he's my favorite. I guess I, I strangely enough, I'm probably going to have to go with Bruce Banner and Hulk. And the reason for that is, um, First of all, I watched the Bill Bixby version and, and Lou Ferrigno when I was growing up, which I think I just dated myself again, probably. Um, but uh, before I was a lawyer, my undergraduate, I was actually, um, uh, I, I studied science. And so I always loved sort of the, the fact that he, was, that he was a scientist. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and the fact that, that the scientist then gets to turn big and you know, green and beat up people was also kind of a cool thing, frankly, for somebody who studied science when he was a kid. Right. So, um, so I'd, I'd, I'd have to go, go in a sense with that. And I, and I always appreciated the fact and that, that as a general matter, I think there've been some exceptions and obviously it all depends upon which version of Hulk you're looking at. He doesn't kill people, you know, right. you know, even, even though he's got this incredible power and supposedly is, is completely consumed with rage that moral center, and I guess that maybe go, goes back to the cap thing, is still intact. Yeah. You know, the Hulk doesn't, he may, he may do it accidentally, but he does not intentionally kill people. Um, and, and, and that's, so it, 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 it does, it does go, to the, go to the moral center, which of course is the great thing about, um, you know, in, in many ways, the superhero movies and comic books and stories that they, they, they can speak to ordinary people and how you know we all would wish we would behave yeah. when we're faced with extremists i so i absolutely love the movies and i love like how they foreshadowed the tva like years ago before this season of loki and all that but um one and my my brother-in-law also the lawyer can't stand the marvel movies he just for him he can't suspend disbelief and stuff for certain things and uh, one thing I will agree with uh, some of the some of my friends who like the Hulk also is the Hulk was not well represented in the movies, in my opinion. <laughs> he could have been done so much better, even in just the MCU portion of it with the Avengers. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but I love the movies. I love the shows. I'm, I'm absolutely. Addicted. Well, he's 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 never had. I mean, since since, you know, it, you know it, certainly recently he's not had his own movie to flesh himself out so he's always a supporting character yeah um and 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 the prior versions were not great um you know that was why i i i I love the bill bixby ones um you know they were corny uh (laughs) the special effects were hideous but there was that moral center always in those movies yeah for sure corny's not bad though i love corny stuff i like being corny in my rpgs as well so uh what um mark we we kind of touched on her favorite characters that she currently plays uh Alyssa plays what about you mark what kind of characters do you enjoy playing see part of the problem is i i i am like almost always the dm i knew you were gonna say that (laughs) almost always there was only one period of time that i was regularly playing i used to always go to these go to the conventions because it was the one chance I could get to play. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know that I've really ever formed a favorite. I, I, I would say that, that, that out of, out of all the ones I've played over the years, and, and there have been a few times, I, I, I tend to like the dwarven fighter thieves <laughs> to be like honest. multi-class or you just like dwarven fighters and dwarven thieves. Well, no, I'm, 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 I'm talking the old fashioned, oh, old school, you know, you don't you know multi-class. A D and D where you're both a fighter and a thief and you go up and you divide yeah. your experience points in half and you and you go up at the same point. Of course I you know, I never yeah. played where you cap out on anything, but there's just something um I've 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 always had had sort of sort of a uh uh a liking for the the the, the little guy, you know, who uh who uh runs you know runs into combat with the axe, but also has some other skills as well. So that that probably is is if you ask my friends who I'm likely to play in AD&D, 
it's it's that. Um, now, my other favorite game, frankly, is, um, and Alyssa will also comment on this, I think, is Call of Cthulhu. And that I just, you know, in, in a sense, in that case, you know, playing just a normal person who may or may not have some skills or some knowledge is also a lot of fun. Um, yeah. You can't rely on your, you know, your, your vorpal sword or your fireball um, in that you got to, it, it's all up what's up here. Um, and I think that probably shows in what I did in Necropolis that there's, you, you got to, it, it's a thinking game because I like, that, that's the kind of games I, I, I prefer. You know, there are times when it's okay to solve every issue with a, you know, you know wave of the, the magic user or the wizard's wand, but I'd prefer to have the party figure it out. And so I kind of like characters that have to figure it out. Okay. Um, so... I've, I've recently started to get into Call of Cthulhu. We have a game that's streamed here. It's not normal Call of Cthulhu, though. We use Pulp Cthulhu, and mm -hmm. it gets pretty crazy. We have a lot of, like, crazy combat scenes and stuff in that game. It, it resorts to violence and absurdity all the time. And we've got, like, weird aliens, and it's it's completely over the top. <laughs> not safe for work, if anyone's thinking of watching it. Uh, you yeah. know, don't watch it in front of children the way we play it. None of that. Like, there's drug references. There's all sorts of stuff. So very adult themed. Uh, so we do have another question from uh, Bill from Roll Stats. Uh, this is a question for Mark. Uh, are there more of the Lost Land supplements coming, or is the primary focus shifting to Necropolis? Uh, no, I, th I think there's there, there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline. I think most of it either I don't know about. Most things I know about, I probably shouldn't be talking about. Uh, but there's no question that that the intention is to keep expanding the Lost Lands. Um, there's a number, you know, we, we've, we, we recently did, um, the, uh, Tehuatl, um, which is a Southern region, um, across the seas, south of the, 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 the known lost lands, um, uh, uh, the, uh, Reem supplement came out a while ago. And I think the intention is, is to absolutely keep doing that. Um, yeah. you know, we were, it's it's an incredible campaign world. There's a lot to, to do with it. And frankly, my next project, if I have my way, may actually be in a currently unexplored part of the Lost Lands. So oh, I think there's gonna there's gonna be quite a bit of stuff continuing to come out there. So if you don't have the massive World of the Lost Lands book, you should get it. Not that I'm plugging my own work, but I agree. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> We actually have a link below uh, if you guys are interested in going and checking out uh, Necromancer Games products. Uh, we do have a link in the description so you guys can check that out. Uh, we also have Alyssa's link to her YouTube channel if you want to see her do some live streams or mapping, uh, things like that she has over there on her uh, on her channel. So, um, Alyssa, what, what do you have coming up in the pipeline that you're allowed um, to talk oh. about? Well, I've got a few things actually <laughs> happening um, right now. I'm working on two maps for Chaosium, actually, talking about Call oh, of cool. Cthulhu. I can't give you the specifics on those, but I am working on two projects for those. Then what happens is towards the end of the year, uh, I start to shift into GaryCon mode. Yep. Um, so I'm going to be doing the um, the map for GaryCon again next year, which I'm very honoured to be doing. Um, but uh, uh, alongside that, I'm actually... I don't know if you remember, I did a, a map called uh, the Cosmology of Role Playing Games back around 2013, and it was for uh, Gygax Magazine number one. And uh, Oscar Rios, uh, I think, wrote an article for it at the same time. And it was basically, it was talking about the birth of role playing games from um, that, he likened it onto the like the, the 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 big bang so you got tsr in the center and basically all of these systems and nebula coming off it and he was talking about all of the games that kind of happened as a result but there was only and i did this wonderful blue map with star systems and everything on it each one representative of these games but there was probably only 50 titles on it when i'm redoing that 2021 version and there's going to be a thousand titles on it um and so it and i'm hoping to take that with me to GaryCon next year oh, and cool. um a be selling some but um actually try and have a nice big version for um for the auction awesome. so those are that's probably my main focus for the next uh, nine months will you have your own booth there 
No, I never do because I actually love running games. Um, so I'll do a seminar. We'll probably do a version of the fantasy mapping show, which I do with Anna Maya. Um, but then I, I love, I run Call of Cthulhu games, so that will be what I'm doing. Uh, my, my maps will be available at some stalls. Like Noble Dwarf is going to be there. They do my canvas prints. Okay. Um, so the people will be carrying my maps for me. That's awesome. You know, I, I I probably would be remiss. I mean, I, I think we've been talking about the maps, and, and you know, Alyssa's map is phenomenal, and, and as we said, Robert Alt Altbauer is um, you know, also phenomenal, and did the all, all the other maps. But you know, the other thing in this is is the artwork, and and I think you know if if, if you know a lot of the Frog social media has been pushing the artwork out. Uh, Casey Christopherson is the art director at at, at uh, Frog God, and you know one of the the, the, the joys of writing uh, these books. When I come up with an idea for a room and I think it, you know, you know, I've got this great idea for an encounter or a location or whatever, and then I would sort of sketch it out for Casey and I'd give some descriptions. Uh, here's what I want. Here's, here's, you know, and he would then go off and find the right artist and then this piece of artwork comes back. You know, as a DM, I want to have a professional artist and a professional cartographer now on staff. I, I can't afford to do that as a, as a DM, but I it understand. is the, the artwork <laughs> is just incredible. And, and, and so all the artwork that, that, that you're seeing, uh, the full color artwork is all brand new. None of it is, is old. Um, now, there was great artwork in the original. It was all black and white because it was a, it had a color cover, but a black and white interior. Um, we're reusing almost all, not all, but but you know a large po portion of the old black and white um, art, and we're adding on to it all the full color art that that um, that you're seeing, and several others that of course are spoilers, and I we don't want to you know show yet. Um, so the artwork is just absolutely phenomenal, and um, it is it has been a pleasure to work with 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 these artists, um, you know, coming up with this idea. And then having this piece of artwork come back and, and and having one of two reactions either either wow that's exactly what i imagined that's just incredible or wow that's not exactly what i thought of at all it's cooler and i'm right. going to modify what i wrote to to match what what this artist has has done and and, and that is just one of the things that um you know, moving from the consumer side to the creative side, you know, getting to work with people like Alyssa and Robert, and and having your ideas brought to life, yeah, is is um, you know, it, it, it's something that that I think every DM wishes we had, but don't normally have the resources to provide for, and that's just something I think you know people will see that in 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 the book, a um, lot a lot of cool stuff. That's, that's kind of funny that you say that, you know, it's nice getting that artwork, that it basically inspires you. Because that's, for me right there, that's one of my favorite things about playing tabletop RPGs. It's when my players surprise me. Whether it's they add something that I never would have thought or make an assumption about something. I'm like, that's way better than my idea. I'm running with it. Like, that's absolutely my favorite thing about role-playing games. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, the, the hard part about writing is normally I'm just sitting at my computer looking at the next sentence and editing it or modifying it or writing a new new encounter and you just sort of sit there and then at the end you move on to the next the next room um, it's it's kind of lonely yeah as, as all writing is uh, but the being able to collaborate with the artists and, and especially with with Alyssa where you know I would actually j join her her twitch channel when she was you know, uh, you know, showing it, and I'd say, uh, "Don't forget what's on the left." <laughs> it's like, "Oh, right." Um, it was. It was actually we were able to collaborate actually in real time, and then obviously had to had to do a lot you know offline. But being able to do that is uh, is something that you just don't get normally when you're you're sitting and writing yeah. an adventure. And you're right. I mean, the whole point of of role playing. Is to sit around a table and it's not for the players to follow the dm script it's it's to interact and you know to come up with 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 a, with great ideas and a story and, and and problem solve i can't tell how many times you know 
my players came up with solutions to problems that never occurred to me when I was writing the adventure. It's, yeah. it's, you know, that, that, that's, that's what makes it um, not a video game, right? Exactly. You know, a, a video game can't really interact with you, but other people can. And you, you know, you can also eat a bowl of Fritos with other people. You can't <laughs> eat a bowl of Fritos with a video game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I'm going to quickly, well, before I do that, uh, I do want to quickly say uh, we're going to do the giveaway here in a second. Uh, I'm going to come up with a question here in a minute. I will then ask the question and I will play the video. By the time the video is done, I will take uh, one of the people who answered it correctly. Uh, by the end of the video playing, I will choose a winner. Um, and when I come back, I'll roll based on the people who, who did it. So uh, we have a few people in chat still. So we're hitting, we're up to 11 right now. So I think I'll probably be able to roll a D10 and go from there. Maybe I'll roll a D20 and I'll just count and go through. Um, but with that, uh, one last question uh, about this, and that is going to be, uh, who all have you collaborated with in this process that maybe doesn't get enough credit? I know I'm putting you on the spot because you're like, oh, I'm gonna forget someone now. Ah. <laughs> uh. You know, it, it, it's really hard to come up with one person. It yeah. really is. What I'd say is, um, you know, both Robert and Alyssa were, were hugely important in, in working through this process. Uh, Casey uh, Christopherson um, was, you know, critical to getting the art right. Um, I, I've been working with, with uh, Zach and, and Matt Finch at frog god to try to make sure that what we're doing makes sense mm -hmm. uh because fundamentally you know you know it's a business you know, yeah. you know we we do need to um you know make make some money doing this and so trying to decide how we design the kickstarter um jeff harkness was the editor um and and did a phenomenal job of correcting all of my passive voice <laughs> Uh, and, and I truly appreciate uh, uh, all of that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's it, 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 it's it, it, it's a team effort. It really is a team effort to get one of these things done. And I, I know I've missed people because you put me on the spot. And next time I'm going to bring a list with me so I don't miss anybody. There you go. You could just post the credits page from your book online afterwards, and I'll I'll reshare it. That's probably what I will have to do. That's probably what I'll have to do. And 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 I do have to thank, obviously, you know, you know Gary for originally writing this, yeah. and for me being given the somewhat um, humble task of saying, yeah, I I can do better than Gary Gygax in writing an adventure. That's 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 that that, that that's a big task. Yeah. That's a that that's a that's a tall tall order. That's awesome. Uh, so. I'm thinking about, uh, there was something in particular, this is for the question. There was something in particular that was met, uh, that was mentioned earlier that filled the empty space uh, of this adventure. Uh, it was a very specific thing mentioned. So if you remember what we were talking about, the big time suck of this adventure, uh, what was it that was added on the map that was talked about earlier? Uh, if you were here earlier in the discussion, you will know. Uh, and with that, I'm going to cut to the video. So post your answers uh, in the chat. I will say his name just this once and only whisper it. The name of this evil one is... Rotep. So says the priest of Thoth, beseeching your aid. Something has awoken within the ancient necropolis in the Harhahura Hills. Have you the courage to venture there and rid the land at last of a terrifying evil? Necropolis, the legendary adventure from Necromancer Games. Now completely updated and revised for 5e. Now on Kickstarter.
All right. So we are back. That was the Kickstarter video. So if you have not backed it yet, uh, be sure to do that. I think you will be very happy, especially if you like old school games. Uh, you can use this for swords and wizardry. If you like to uh, get some of the Frog God games um, adventures where it's the old school, like Keep on the Borderlands that has been converted to 5e, you'll probably like this for that as well. So uh, with that, let me look at the chat and see how many people answer. We got one correct answer. So this is a pretty easy uh, giveaway. I don't even have to roll any dice. I'm going to roll one anyway, just because I want to. I rolled a d20 and I literally critted. So there you go. Uh, VTT Advisor. Uh, you win. You said a statue. You even said a huge statue, which was not in the original time sink area. So you have won. So what I'm going to ask you to do is reach out to me on Twitter. You can send me a private message. If you don't have Twitter, send it to me on Instagram. You can join my Discord. The link's below. You could message me on there. Many different ways to get a hold of me. Message me. Get a hold of me. Let me know. Uh, verify it's your actual account uh, of VTT Advisor. And we will work out getting you that coupon code uh, so you can get um, $25 off over at Necromancer Games. Woo! So, Woot! Nice job. <laughs> oh, he says award to someone else. All right, we'll, we'll do it. You know what? We'll do another giveaway then. Uh, we could do that tomorrow. I will do a stream, I think, tomorrow. So I'll, I'll give away that $25 tomorrow. Um, but yeah, thank you for playing. And uh, yeah. With that, I do have a couple more minutes if you guys want um, to say anything, promote anything uh, before we go off stream. Alyssa, anything you want to say? I think the only thing that I would add is buried down in the Kickstarter a little bit. There is a limited edition numbered and signed canvas prints um of this map that i did and um, there were 25 originally but definitely well below 10 um and it's archival quality canvas too it's top-notch stuff uh, worth putting your hands on it because the colors on canvas are just it would look absolutely fantastic in any gaming room you're going to want to take a look at that option do you know what op or uh, what that price point is on the kickstarter no i do not <laughs> sir <laughs> No, it's an add-on, and I'm not actually familiar oh, an add -on. With, okay. with how much it is. Gotcha. Okay. But it is definitely worth getting. If you, I, I'm not even, and if they all sell out, I don't think even I get a copy. And I don't get a copy, because Zach was like, you got to keep a copy yourself. I'm like, I don't think it works that way. I've never kept a copy of my own signed print. So, um, yeah, hopefully someone will get number one or number two out there. Someone should buy it and then give it to Alyssa. <laughs> And and get it for uh, Mark over here as well, because he, absolutely you know, he wants one. <laughs> absolutely, awesome. Uh, so Alyssa, uh, you have Twitter and YouTube. What, where all can they find you? Oh, I am all over. Okay, if you look at Alyssa Faden, you're going to find me. AlyssaFaden.com exists, and that's me. Uh, so it's got everything on there. Um, but I'm also Alyssa Faden on Patreon. Would love for you to come and check me out over there. I offer guides on how-tos. I give map components away every single month. Um, I give freebie maps away. I even give a sneak peek behind the scenes. Some of my more embarrassing pieces I did years ago. Um, and I have a Discord that you can join as well. So t check that out. And I am on Twitter and YouTube and Facebook, all under the name Alyssa Faden. Awesome. And apparently I'm going to be on TikTok too. Yes, she. I convinced her before stream to get on TikTok. So she'll be over there as well. And I'll and, promote and, and, her over there too. And, and, and sadly, I'm on almost no social media because I'm like really old, I guess. But um, I am on Facebook. Uh, but if you look for markgreenberg.com, it's somebody else. It was taken long before I got there. So don't like send that guy messages about this because he'll be very about confused. Dungeons and Dragons. Don't he'll write to go to markgreenberg.com. Ask yeah. him about Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Maybe he'll give it up. We'll just keep Spam us. Spam the man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if, if people do have questions, particularly about the Kickstarter, the best way to do it, uh, if, if you back even for like a buck, you can, you know, you're a backer and you can ask questions in the comments on the Kickstarter. Yeah. Uh, if they're, you know, sort of business related questions or fulfillment related questions, I always punt to somebody else. But if there's questions about the adventure and I can answer them, I will do, you know, I, I, I get an email every time somebody sends a comment. And so I will do my best to answer um, uh, in that format. And I'm doing 
some of these uh, this this press junket. So um, you know, I, I I'll be out there in other places where people can ask me questions probably uh, as well. And sooner or later, somebody's gonna have to teach me how to use like social media so I can actually become <laughs> useful. We'll, we'll help you. You know, us too, right here. We'll help you out. Thank you. I need it. You can start with TikTok. You know, it'll it'll be great. Be on absolutely. Your, your kids. <laughs> Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you uh, for stopping by. It's been a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, it was, again, thank you again. Uh, it was awesome hearing about this and the process that goes in with, like, the collaboration. Uh, that's awesome. So, thank you. Well, I thank pretty you. much appreciate the time. Thank you. This is Master of the Game. I am Juice. Game on. <laughs>